So in this video, we're going to look at installing JESC, 32-bit ESC firmware on ESCs that have got BL Heli S on them. So in this video, we're going to cover the installation process and a couple of the beta flight settings. Now, just full disclosure, JFlight have not paid me to make this video and they've had no input into the content creation as well. And this is actually not a full guide on how to install it on, on any ESC. I'm simply setting up one of my my quads here, so I'm just going to step you through the process. Now, JESC firmware can be installed on any ESCs that have got the H or the L designator. We're going to use BL Heli Configurator, and we're going to make sure we connect our USB cable and our battery first, and then we'll have a look at BL Heli. So in the BL Heli Configurator, with the battery connected, of course, we hit the connect button. Okay, it'll give us this warning here about taking our propellers off. So we'll just hit the read setup button. So it's going to inspect the ESCs, and in a moment, it'll give us the information. And the information we're really looking for up the top here is this part here. So you can see I've got a H designation ESC. So if you've got H or L designation ESCs, then this is going to work just fine. Okay, and that's all we need BL Heli Configurator for. So we'll disconnect there. So the first thing we need to do is head over to the jflight.net website here. And uh, jflight have actually got their own configurator, so we're going to download that. And we're also going to sign up for an account while we're here. If we go to the install instructions on the left-hand side here, it will take us to this page. And if we scroll down a bit, there's a link here, download the latest configurator. So this is going to take us to their uh, GitHub page. And the latest version will be shown. So if we just click on this, and then scroll down a little bit, and we'll see the different options if you've got uh, Linux or Mac or OS. So I'm just going to download the 64-bit. The So this is going to come down as a zip file, and once we down that, download that, uh, we'll just have to unload, unzip it. Okay, so we'll just hit the back button, we'll just go back to the main website, jflight.net, and the next thing you're going to want to do is actually register for an account. So it's free to register, and you just fill in all your details, put in the password, and do your registration. Once we've done that, we'll need to buy ourselves some licenses. So we'll scroll down here. You can see you can buy 4, 20, 100, whichever. Okay, so these, uh, this is US dollars, 23.79. So we'll just add it to the cart. All right, so we'll do the checkout process. So this is, uh, in this example, I'm, I'm buying 20. It's gonna give us uh, 20 ESC, so that's five quads and uh, just go ahead and purchase those and then we can go ahead with the setup process the configurator that you downloaded is going to be here in the zip file so you might want to just double click on that and just drag the folder back out uh, for me i'm just putting on the desktop here okay and once it's done you can see we've got the folder there on the desktop. If we go into that folder, and the, the actual configurator is this file here, JSC configurator. So we can just open that up. Okay, you, you'll get this, in, this uh, pop-up here for Windows. So uh, it's just a security message. You can click on more info and then run anyway. Okay, so this is the interface, this is the JSC configurator, and this is what we can use to actually flash the firmware onto the ESCs. Okay, so once again, with the USB connected, don't forget to connect your battery, because the software is going to need your battery connected to actually see the ESCs. So we'll connect the battery, and go back into the software. Okay, so to start up the software, we'll just double click on the exe file, this is the folder that we extracted from the zip file. Okay, so it opens up with the configurator and we just click on connect up here. Um, in my case, I actually had to connect, uh, click on it twice. 
Okay, so when it opens up, it gives us this message here. Make sure you've taken off your propellers. That's fine. We're reading the setup. Okay, so remember you need to have your battery connected here. So when it opens up, it says your ESCs are unlicensed up the top here. And of course on each, e each ESC, you can see here the version number. So mine is uh, GH30 version 16.7. We're going to write that down and uh, make a note of it. And you can see a couple of my ESCs there reversed. So we just click on license all. Now when this screen opens, this is like a, a portal to the website. So we'll just close that message there. And we're going to scroll down here and basically you're just going to log in the same login details you used on the actual website and just type them into the, the boxes here and do your login. So once you've logged in, it uh, you can see all your account details. And it's actually telling us that it's going to require four of our licenses. So if we've purchased a pack of 20 licenses, for example, that's going to use four of those licenses. And we just click on activate ESCs. It will take us back to this screen here. And you'll notice it'll, in a moment, it will actually start. Okay, so it says they're, they're licensed, but not active, activated. And it's actually giving us some messages up here. It says you need to flash all. So the, the button down the bottom here is flash all. So we'll just click on that one. Now, just make a, this is where we check our version number. Make sure it's the same version as you noted previously. And we're going to look at the JESC version. So I think you can see there's, there's a couple of different options here. And you're just going to have to go through and search for, for the one that uh, that's going to suit you. The, the top two at the top there are the H version. Um, down the bottom we've got uh, we've got 24 and 48 PDM, PWM. So this is 2.2. This is the previous version. Okay, make a note of the version. And then we've got 24 and 48. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to probably choose one once at the top here. So you can see 48 is for whoops and 24 is recommended for three inch. Okay, so in my case, uh, I'm actually just, I'm not doing a three inch, mine's a 2.5 inch. So I'm actually going to choose the 48 kilohertz PW, PWM one. And once we've done that, we can just click on the flash button and now it's going to go through and actually flash each ESC in turn. And this will probably take a few minutes. So once we're all done there, we've done the flash all. And now it's giving us a message up the top there and, and saying click on the flash all telemetry. So once again, we're going to check our version. We chose version 2.3. So I'm going to choose the same one again and flash. So it's, once again, it's going to go through all four ESCs and flash the telemetry. So this is setting them up for a telemetry, which means we can now set up bi-directional D-shot in beta flight. Okay, so we'll just let them go through there and do the, the whole four ESCs. Okay, so that's finished. So just as an additional note, you can see up the top here, common parameters. Now this one, if we look down at motor timing, it's going to be set to medium as default. Uh, I want mine actually set to medium high. Okay, don't automatically set yours to medium high. Uh, you need to know with, which one you need to use here. And I'm just gonna write setup. So we're gonna write that setup to the ESCs as well. Okay, with that, we're pretty much done. So we can just disconnect. Okay, so just a quick note here. If you happen to come back later on and hit the connect button and come to this screen and then hit the read setup button, if you get this message, your ESCs un unlicensed. Okay, there's a reason for that. And the reason is because you haven't connected your battery. So it actually can't see the SCs to know whether they are licensed or not licensed. 
So if we plug the battery in and then do it again, so we'll come back and hit the read setup button again after plugging the battery in. And this time it will bring us to this screen and it will give us a message again and, and tell us that it's now activated. So don't, don't forget to plug your battery in. So next for the beta flight settings. For beta flight we're just going to connect and we're going to come to the configuration tab. Now the first thing we want to look at is your gyro update and your pit loop frequency. So if you're going 8K 4K or 4K 4K here in your pit loop frequency, if this is 4K, you're going to want to come over to the right hand side here and enable bi-directional D-shot and choose D-shot 300. Okay, in the case that you have in the same as me here, an 8K 8K loop, then you must come over here. If you've got 8K, 8K, you have to use D-Shot 600. And don't forget to enable this bi-directional D-Shot here. So we're going to save and reboot. And then connect again. And come back into the configuration tab. Now, an important step you can't forget is to set your motor poles. Now, most larger motors are gonna have 14 poles and smaller motors are going to have 12 poles. So we'll have a look at the motors on this drone and see how many poles they've got. Okay, so when we say poles, we're actually talking about the number of magnets around the bell here. So what we can do is just put a little bit of uh, ink on one of them, and we can just rotate it around, and we can actually count how many magnets around the side there. So this motor here actually has 12 magnets. So we'll go back to beta flight, and we'll do the setting. Okay, so in beta flight, the setting we want here is the motor poles. So basically, this is number of magnets we counted, and that's going to be set to 12. I'm going to save and reboot. Now, just a quick note here. If you happen to have an ESC with the L designator in it, then what you want to use is uh, D-Shot 150, this one right here and you want to set your gyro and pid loop to 2K, 2K. Okay, so that's only if you have an ESC with the L designator in it. Okay, so for this procedure, the sequence is quite important. We're not gonna connect the USB. What we're going to do is we're going to first connect the battery. I've got the propellers off, and we're just gonna wait for the ESC to do its startup tone. So once we've got that, we'll then connect the USB and connect in beta flight. So once we've connected in beta flight, we'll come down here to the motors tab and we'll enable the, I understand the risk down in the bottom right here. Now what we're looking at is this value right here underneath the motors. We're going to just spin up each motor just a little bit and then down again. And what we're looking for is less than 1% errors here. Okay, so we'll do all of them and we've got less than one, but actually we've got no errors at all, so we're all good here. Having done that, we can disconnect the battery and go straight back into beta flight and reconnect. So in beta flight, we're going to connect again and this time we're gonna come down to the PID tuning tab. Once there on the third tab across, filter settings. We'll come into this one and just scroll down right down here to gyro RPM filter. Now this should already be enabled. Okay, if it isn't, just make sure that's enabled there. And just leave these two settings as they are for now and save on the bottom left there. So the next thing we want to do is come down to the CLI and we want to type in tasks, T-A-S-K-S -S, and hit enter. And just scroll up a bit and the values we want to check is this one here, gyro filter and PID. And just make sure that the value that you see here is within 1% of the value you, you set in the configuration tab. We'll just go back there and we have to connect again. Okay, so in the configuration tab, if we just scroll down, we set the gyro and PID frequency to 8K, so that all checks out. 
Okay, so we want to go down to the CLI tab again, type tasks. Okay, we're going to come up and have a look at the same values we were looking at before, the same lines, I mean, here. And basically, what we're going to look at is the max load. And we want to make sure that these are preferably not over 50%. Uh, this one here is 57, so it's kind of borderline. Now, if these are way over 50%, what we're going to do is just reconnect, come back to the configuration tab. Now, if they're over 50%, what you're going to have to do is come down here and reduce your P, your PID loop frequency. So you might go from 8K down to 4K, right? And also you might want to change your D-Shot 600 down to D-Shot 300 as well. Okay, so mine is for the borderline on 50 to 7 percent. I'm going to leave it for the moment and we'll just see how it goes. Okay, so the final settings we need to do in this part of the setup is to come to the PID tuning tab and just come across to the third tab, the filter settings tab. And we're going to scroll down to the bottom here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the gyro RPM filter number. So we're going to change this one. Instead of targeting three harmonics, we're just going to change this to one. Okay, because we've actually got the, the telemetry set up for the SCs there. So we actually need to only uh, target one of the harmonics. And we're just going to change that to one there. And then down here in the dynamic notch filter settings right here, we're going to make some changes. So the dynamic notch width percent, we're going to set this one to zero. For our dynamic notch Q value, we're going to set that one to 200. For the minimum hertz, we're going to set that to 90. And for the maximum hertz, we're going to change this one down to about 330. Okay, now you'll see some other websites will probably suggest different values for these slightly different values, but they shouldn't vary from this too much. And we'll save that. Okay, so at this stage we're ready to do some test flying, and we're going to come back and adjust the filter settings. So I'll just uh, have a look in beta flight and I'll explain the process. I'm not going to take you through it, but I'll just explain it a bit. We're basically going to give it a test fly and check how hot the motors are. And then we're going to come back into beta flight. So back in beta flight on the PID tuning tab again, we've got the filter settings here. So we just want to go down and we want to move the gyro filter multiplier and the D term, and we're just going to move them to the right about 0.2. Okay, both of them 0.2. And basically we're just going to refly it, test the motors, check how hot they've gotten. If they're not hot, we can move it up a little bit. So when they're, when they're hot, when they're quite warm to the touch, we're going to then back these off 0.2. Now, can we always move these in unison? Okay, so even once we've done that, we're still not done. There's still a lot to, to do with the tuning and filtering. And I'm just going to show you on the website where you can click to get more information about that. Okay, so back on the jflight.net uh, website, if you click on the left, on the left here, if you click on overview, and there's a link here to RPM filtering. So this is a link to uh, an article on the GitHub. And basically this explains in a lot of detail about bidirectional D-Shot and RPM filtering. And so you can actually just read down here and it's, it's quite involved. There's, uh, there's more of a process to, to do than what we've done here already. Uh, so you can just read down there and that's a full explanation and you can go ahead and do even more filtering uh, after reading this information. Okay, so that's actually a, a very brief introduction of how to set up JSC firmware. Uh, there's a lot to learn. So please go ahead and, and do a bit more reading on their GitHub page and find out more about it.